Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Yes, welcome friends. It is time for another irrelevant episode of Cut the Tape. All right. I've had a huge migraine all day, so I'm not even going to bother looking at what I'm doing. I just, I, I grab some stuff, random stuff. Today, today it's masterpiece. It's masterpiece stuff. It's masterpiece. So I'm going to tell you a true story. I started filming this with spin out and then I realized halfway through that it just wasn't recording. So we're gonna go for round two, which is great because that really helps my migraine. Anyway, as I was saying previously in the video that you didn't see, it's been a while since I've opened a Masterpiece figure and I don't remember who this is, MP19+. Plus. If I had to take a wild guess, which this is, I'm gonna go with Smokescreen anime version of smokescreen now takara has been making a, a toy version of the masterpiece figure and then they go back retool and do a anime version and vice versa and as i was explaining with spin out who has the toy accurate head i really want a sun streaker with the toy accurate head i also want a sun streaker with the anime head i want both now and forever for some figures we get that we get that you get to choose or you get to have the best of both worlds. I want the best of both worlds. So first thing we're looking at, this box is similar to the uh, Generation Selects box. All right, this is not offered by Hasbro. Uh, not the, no, I don't think it was ever available on the Plus, but it's got the black shipping box. Yes, I was right, it is smokescreen. And that, that really was just a complete total guess. And then you have your box inside. Remember when it just used to be like this? Remember when Smokescreen, or what, who was the first one? It was Prowl, right? Prowl was the first one that came to come out. And Sideswipe was the first one designed. Or maybe it's reversed. I know Sideswipe was the first one designed because that was still at Hasbro when it was designed. All right, so smokescreen. So what's different about this smokescreen? I think it's just the head, weapon, and it's got this little smoky feature. So you get smoke coming out the back. Yeah, he's got different faces. The shoulder cannons are uh, anime based. Although I think the shoulder cannons off the last masterpiece were, were anime based. Hmm. That's how long it's been. I don't remember. I don't remember. So this is a thicker cardboard, right? I'm still going to be very gentle because if I put my finger in here, it's going to crease the box. I don't want to crease the box. So I cut the tape, put my knife in there, open it, right? It's a thicker cardboard. So I'm okay just using my my fat fingers all right Ooh. i like how takara packs everything to be tight the box like so here's another masterpiece right but the box is designed to fit the contents not the contents to be put into a box and then have all this air in it you know takara doesn't play those games you, you're buying something you know the size of it with any other toy line, I'm not trying to single out Trans Transformers is a big, big culprit in the air in the box. But uh, other toy lines do it too. Takara, no, senor. 
you know what size you're getting. Is this taped down? It's not taped down. Boom. So this is a 1982 Datsun ZX. I had a, no wait, this is the 1981 Datsun Z, 280ZX. I had a 1982 Datsun 280ZX, which was decoed uh, as blue, blue streak. It was blue on the side, silver down the front. Uh, it had a, a huge spoiler front end kit. And unfortunately the car did not survive. I had to donate what was left of it. I miss that car dearly. I wish I still had it. It's a beautiful piece of machinery. But Datsuns are just, whoo! What? Are you kidding me? Oh, I see. See, I thought it was just one. It opens up. It's a shell, see? So, you, so when it's in car mode, mm, clever, but does it need to be clever? So, you know, it's in car mode. <laughs> Plugs into the back here to the exhaust port and you're rolling. But when you transform, all right, all right you can put it like this. <laughs> clever. Yes, necessary? I don't know. Clever, yes. Necessary, I don't know. I do love the colors on this. I also used to have a 300ZX, uh, an 87, which I wanted to deco out as smokescreen. Um, it was white. That car lasted a a few years more than the Datsun, but uh, alas, they are money pits. Me being a naive young man thought, oh, I'll, I don't have any expenses right now. I can, I can afford to put money into them. Man, <laughs> I should have saved all that money. And once again, this is why I don't like to transform things on the show. Look how good I am. Look, look, look at this. Look at how good I am at getting that. All right, so anyway. Let's take a look at that beautiful face. There's something so perfect about the aesthetic of the original Transformers. The ones that were based off the Diaclone robots that original 84 lineup. There is something very, very unique about them that uh, not easily replicated in today's figures. Even when you look at Generations toys, they're still not, they still don't have the magic, I think, of those early figures. I think some of the Masterpiece figures do a pretty good job of trying to capture that magic. But as far as new characters go, new Transformers, and it's it's a general observation. It's I don't say that as a critique. I just say that as an observation. That's all, an observation. It's my opinion. But then again, I grew up with the vintage Transformers. So maybe I'm biased. However, am I really biased? Because I, I'm all over the spectrum when it comes to where I collect. I love Beast Wars, love me some Beast Wars. I mean, I've been up to date with pretty much all the movie stuff. Right? Cyberverse. I mean, say what you will about the show, but hey, 
I've got Cyberverse, right? Oh, beautiful. It's been a while since I transformed these, these guys. Whew. See, that's the good thing about knowing the character is you have an idea of where things are supposed to go. When you're playing with a new toy that you've never experienced before say say a new character like from cyberverse or something uh you don't know where certain things go and so you're guessing and so sometimes you you gotta look at the instructions sometimes you gotta get some help from uh from professor youtube say that goes like that yeah that looks better that way can't say I'm terribly happy about that expression but never fear there's another one it comes with two additional faces pop these guys off I gotta say, that's probably the easiest face that pops off for any Masterpiece figure. Pop a new one in there. He's good to go. Shove a blaster in his hand and send him off to war. Whew. There is nothing like having a line of classic cars that transform. I mean, I wish we could have all sorts of cars that transform. I wish we could have like, whew, in Masterpiece style, mind you, um, old Camaros, uh, you know, obviously they're, you know, you could say Bumblebee, yeah, but I mean like, in that G1 aesthetic, right? Like, try and recapture that G1 aesthetic. I remember uh, we were throwing around ideas for the anniversary. Gosh, I think it was the 35th anniversary? Or 30th anniversary? I don't remember. And uh, Aaron had some art done without me knowing. He had commissioned some art of new characters done in G1 style. So, like, Bulkhead was a retool of Trailbreaker, right? Uh, Lockdown was a retool of Sideswipe, G1. But let's do the reverse, right? Let's make some new characters, but in that old real world car style. I'm not talking about alternators. But I'm talking about like, give me a Datsun pickup truck, make it a character, make it a new character. Are we gonna get there with Masterpiece? Probably not. There's too many characters to do. There's too many guys in the bank that you could draw from. Right? Then you got Beast Wars. And eventually you're gonna get to Armada, Unicron Trilogy guys, right? So let's see, we can take this and now we can, he's running really fast. And uh, you know what, if you wanna use these, if you have a Masterpiece Blur from uh, Terra Sarah Party, these might be good for that too. Or if uh, Haztac puts out a Masterpiece Blur, you got a, you got a piece already tooled up. Boom, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I was hoping this guy would come with some sticker sheets, but alas, he does not. Hey, I've got one more masterpiece I'm gonna to open today. One I've been uh, waiting to open for a long time. Ah! 
MP38 Plus. I think this is the Red Optimus Primal. Oh, well, it wasn't even, it was apparently cut, but I've never opened it. It is the Red Optimus Primal. This is based off a uh, exclusive from the Beast Wars line, the first iteration. It was a clear translucent red Optimus Primal. And here we go. We've got a, I, we'll see if it's clear. I think parts of it are clear. A red Opti Optimus Primal, Burning Convoy, as he was called in Japan. Uh, this character in this iteration was seen in the Beast Wars 2 movie, I think for just a, a nanosecond, where he teams up with Leo Convoy. See, now, because this is thick cardboard, I can do that. All right, I'm not shoving my fat finger in there. Or if you want, stick your blade into the side, lower it like that. QR code. Go ahead, scan it. I'll wait. There he is. There he is, boys and girls. Actually, I think the only person who's watching this is Eldron. I don't even watch that. All right, here we go. He's got instructions. Crap, is that a battery pack? Oh, crap. There's a battery. I never even knew that. There's a battery pack. The back of his head. So that his eyes can light up. And stare at you while you sleep. Ooh, now he's got. Ah, everything's falling out. All right. So it looks like he's got the open face with the lips, the, the controversial lips at the time. <gasps> he's got lips. Remember that in the show? Then, when you'd go into battle, that mask would come up, and you're like, oh yeah, the Beast Wars are about to get real. And they did. They did get real. Real good. Now, even though the Beast War characters, the Maximals, are smaller than their G1 counterparts. I still feel this is a little small. I mean, you know, you compare it to Megatron, Dinobot, yes, it's in scale, and, and Masterpiece, Mega, Beast Wars Megatron and Dinobot are great. But he just feels a little small. You kind of want to just rub his belly for good luck. <laughs> but you remove his face. He's got a secret face under there. We're going to put the mad face on because he's mad that he's been in the package for so long. You unscrew this and batteries go in there. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that until I looked, I looked at the instructions. I didn't know that. Oh, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? He won't. So, just like Smokescreen, it should be relatively easy transforming because we're so familiar with the character. We kind of know where everything should go. It's very similar to the original Beast Wars transformation of the, car of the toy. Not exact, but, you know, close enough. And this feels a little long. Oh, yeah, he's got that weird knee action here. Let's see if we can do the other side. Yeah, he's got that weird, like, knee thing here. There we go. There we go. That's so bizarre. Such a weird choice, engineering-wise, to, to have that. 
very, very odd choice. And, you know, I, it's been a while since I've transformed Optimus Prime on them. I gotta tell ya, the clear pr plastic, first of all, is holding up quite well. I don't feel like I'm gonna break it. But as far as transformation sequences goes, this is pretty intricate for the size. Now we do know where everything should go because he's heavily based off the original figure. So we kind of know where certain things are and that certain things need to come out. Otherwise, I'd probably be looking at the instructions or looking at someone's video online to help me transform something. And there's no shame in that. There's absolutely no shame in, in asking for help or looking online to transform a figure. I only removed that head because I... There we go. Because I was a little concerned about perhaps scratching it. There we are. Is it going backwards or forwards? Feels like this comes back. There we go. Hi, my little guy. Isn't he cute? The first time I met Gary Chalk, who does the voice of Optimus Primal, incredibly nice human being, wonderful man, very charming, not as flatulent as I thought he would be. He signed my Transmetal Optimus Primal for me. It was sealed, still sealed, I still have it. And I asked if he'd sign it. My little guy, isn't he cute? And he loved it. And he did the line for me, which I didn't ask him to, but it's so nice when, when people play to their base, when they know, it's like, hey, you know, this guy came all the way from who knows where to check me out. The least I could do is throw him a line. And there we go. Gary Chalk was the first voice actor for Transformers I ever met. There we are. Beautiful. I love it. I gave him the masked up face because he's angry. He's, he's mad. He's mad at you. He's, he's mad at me. Because people suck. We need to do better at being nice to other people and other humans. Beautiful. I love it. Let's, let's put them side by side. They can be friends because they both have red. And, uh, you know, going back to the size thing, it bothers me a little bit. I, I want Optimus Primal to be, like, up here, not down here. I want him up, up here. But I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. You're happy with it. I mean, I assume you're happy with it. I don't really care either way. And that's it. That's it. We cut some tape. We cut some tape. We talked a little bit about Beast Wars. We talked a little bit about G1. We talked about the aesthetic of transformation. And I think that's a wrap. Good talk. I, I had a migraine. It's it's gone down a bit because I've I've gotten to transform something. So I got my my plastic crack addiction out of the way. 
it, it's been a it's been a while since I've opened anything. I got I got a pile of Kingdom figures waiting for me. And don't even get me started on bot. I got I I got like a mountain of bot bots to open. I still have bot shots I need to open. Oh. Be nice to each other. Be kind. Wash your hands. Keep wearing a mask where appropriate. Get your vaccinations. Believe in science. Uh, and don't believe that UFO report that the government just put out. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. They, they know more than they're telling us. Whether those are you, aliens or not, they, I, I, you know, I bet you they know. I bet you they know. If those aren't aliens, then I bet you they have their ideas what country those things are coming from. It's probably us. All right, guys. Peace.